Welcome everyone to our webinar today. Thank you so much for conferencing in. Um, I'm here, Allison Caravo with Karen Turk. We're with the Monarch Joint Venture, and we're gonna be talking about our rapid assessment and, um, tool for assessing road sites for Monarch Habitat and our uh, the habitat calculator associated with it. Um, this is part of a project that's been funded by the National Cooperative Highway Research Program, evaluating the suitability of roadway corridors for use by monarch butterflies. And this is a collaborative project. You can see some of our other co-authors listed here. Um, thanks to them for the teamwork on this project. So just as a kind of recap, for many of you familiar with our project, we have a few components that we've developed. There's a landscape uh, prioritization model that was developed in GIS. Uh, and we heard about this last week from Chris Newton-Boom and Eric Wonsdorf. Uh, if you missed that webinar and want to hear it, we have that recorded. And then we have uh, developed in Survey123, uh, the rapid assessment tool for habitat assessment in the field and a habitat calculator that goes with that. That's what we're talking about today. Then we've also developed some materials that support best management practices, decision support for roadside managers, bringing um, this information to their fingertips. And uh, we'll be pushing out this sort of information this year um, through a website. So today we're going to have a little introduction to uh, the development of the rapid assessment and calculator. And then uh, Karen's going to take us into the tool and show us how it works and walk us through it so that you can see yourself running it. And then we do have time for questions at the end. So if you'd like to chat us your questions uh, so you don't forget them along the way, we will read those out and then answer them at the end of the presentation. So I'd like to start by talking about some of the questions that we think can be addressed with our rapid assessment tool and habitat quality calculator. Some roadside managers might like to know if they have monarch habitat existing along their roadways. They also might like to learn about where the habitat is best in their road system. And they might like to know um, on the flip side where areas could be improved for uh, monarch habitat. And another question that our uh, tool will help with is addressing how management affects habitat quality. So areas that have been targeted for weed control, for instance, or uh, for modified mowing regimes um, can be uh, monitored with this to see how the habitat is responding. And so um, we could also want to know if we could track our increases in monarch habitat quality in response to those management actions. Um, and we can do that with this tool. So first, I guess we all need to have the um, same definition of what monarch habitat quality is. And for this roadside project, we uh, broke it into four main components. The first one being breeding habitat, and that is primarily milkweed. And um, this is where the eggs and larvae develop. Uh, another important component is foraging habitat. And these are uh, plants that provide nectar for foraging adult monarchs. And these uh, varieties of flowers also provide habitat for many other insects um, and pollinators. The threats and context of roads um, are several. There are uh, the chances of colliding with vehicles. There are also chemicals that come off of roadways um, from the exhaust and from braking. And um, then because roadside areas are also very linear, there's exposure to the other side of the right of way, which often borders undeveloped or agricultural areas where there could also be exposure to uh, drift. We also considered the management practices on the rights of way themselves and uh, focused on two primary actions that are very common. Um, roadways have to be maintained for good sight lines and for safety and uh, treating weeds is also of, um, of primary concern. So we looked at herbicide application practices as well as mowing practices. 
And so how this works is uh, visits are made in the field and data are collected with the rapid assessment. And then those data go seamlessly into a habitat calculator, which produces habitat quality scores. And then those can be fed back into management decisions. The rapid assessment we designed in Survey 123, this is an Esri product that is familiar to many departments of transportation, and it enables data entry on uh, tablets or phones or on paper with uh, data entry back at your desk. It's quick and simple, and we've created non-technical options. We also have the ability for states to customize their surveys and to manage their own data. And Karen will go through all of those details. Just to go over the field component of a rapid assessment, these are done at, at locations that are either random or systematically located in the road system. And um, you know, every mile or every half mile or quarter mile, depending on the size area that uh, you wish to sample and repeat samples are taken. Each sample is 150 feet that you walk from, say, where you park your truck, you walk up 100 feet, and then you walk back to the back of the right of way and get the width. And that becomes the survey area. And then a surveyor zigzags back through that area looking for milkweed, assessing the different types of nectar plants, looking for invasive plants, and then notes are made about management. Also, there's an ability to take information about monarchs, adults, eggs, and larvae, and that is optional. The monarch habitat calculator then takes this information and pulls it all together. I know this is a lot of information on one side, but I just want to direct your attention here on the left. There are the four main components of habitat that we talked about before. And then each of these things in the middle are the actual measures that go down on the data form or into survey one, two, three. And then these are the calculations on the right that create the scores. You don't have to worry about that part. And then in the end, you would end up with a set of scores. So at the bottom here, we've got a graph showing the different types of overall scores that we, did, that we um, got in our Minnesota survey of about 300 sites. And here's a map depicting Darker uh, dots are higher values than lighter dots. And then you can see there's a pop-up window that has the information for each dot. If you wish to um, hone in, you can create a customized box that tells you the overall score and component scores. And I think that is it. Um, and now I'm going to turn things over to Karen who's going to walk you through how you can actually run this yourself for your own state. So just wanted to highlight that this tool is available for free to anyone who'd like to use it. And um, we will provide those files. Um, I'm going to share, let's see, um, with Karen now. Just give us a second. Okay, thank you, Allison, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Take you through the technical side of things and show you how easy it is to set up and use this tool. Um, first of all, I want to emphasize, uh, Bria, just three point out that the, uh, the Rapid Roadside Monarch Habitat Assessment Tool and the Monarch Habitat Quality Tool that we've been talking about developing are actually integrated into one tool, which I'm calling, calling the Roadside Monarch Habitat Evaluator. Evaluator. The rapid uh, roadside um, habitat assessment or the field survey is the survey one, two, three field application, which um, uh, uh, field techs can use to collect data and, uh, and submit it into an ArcGIS online database. The Monarch Habitat Quality Calculator, Habitat, habitat Calculator, is a function of that survey tool. So in the background, there are calculated 
fields um, that are integrated in, into the survey. Um, and when the, when the data is submitted, those, those computations are automatically done and output habitat scores are generated. And you'll be able to see that in the back end when you look at the back. So the benefits of this tool um, are many. It is easy to set up and use. Um, it is customizable to your needs. And we didn't want to have, uh, create a one size fits all because we've heard from different states slightly different um, uh, applications they wanted to, to uh, utilize. Um, it uses technology that is most likely already available to you, so free. Uh, and like the master here is uh, if your state has an organizational ArcGIS online account, which from what, I've, uh, from what I understand, most states have this, um, but this, that's poor to, to making this tool work. Um, and most importantly, um, because of your state has this uh, online repository already available to you, you own and control the data. So uh, 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 repository, it's going to be published up to your own, uh, your own database, and you can have free access to using control. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through what you'll need to, um, to implement this tool, how to set it up, how to use it to collect data in the field, and then finally how to review those results. So number one, what you'll, uh, what you'll need. Uh, organizational GIS support. So primarily, again, this means uh, having a, a state enterprise ArcGIS on, or your agency ArcGIS online account. And then secondarily, administrative rights to that AGOL account. So, um, and if you uh, do GIS speak, that is having a creator role or a publisher role to that ArcGIS account. Um, so you may have to work with GIS staff or GIS, uh, or, uh, or ArcGIS, uh, uh, ArcGIS online uh, uh, administrator to initiate this. Secondarily, you'll need the survey template. This is the easy part because we're going to give this to you. Um, eventually, this is something you'll be able to download from our website. Um, in the interim, uh, we are going to we can serve this to you directly through email so we get that, that all up and running. Um, but you'll download a zipped survey template file. And there's three uh, files in that. One is set of instructions, um, step by step screenshot instructions on how to how to set this all up. Um, next, the this is the, the core of it is the roadside monarch habitat survey template that, that is just an Excel file. And then an associated file called native, which is a CSV file that you're just going to throw into uh, throw into a folder to make this all work. And then uh, finally, you'll need uh, just two pieces of free software. This is also um, created by ESRI, which is ArcGIS Online, free to you. Uh, the first one is the Survey123 Connect. This is the software you'll, you'll need for, as a project manager, you will need. This is the software that um, will um, generate the the survey, you'll be able to customize the survey in this, uh, uh, this software and then publish it up to your ArcGIS online account. Next um, is the survey one you field app, or it's also known as survey one you for ArcGIS. This is for your field technician. Uh, again, a, a free, easily downloadable from any app store um, to your mobile device. Um, we'll just bring that in and then um, and then a second step is go, go up and pull down the survey form that you've published up. And you got to collect that in the field. So this is my uh, unifying graphic of all of this. Um, as you see, the, your agency's ArcGIS online account is core and central to this. Um, uh, we're going to use, uh, we're going to use uh, these tools to configure and publish the survey, um, collect the data, and then view and analyze the results all in one system. Um, so you, as an administrator or as a project manager, publish up the survey to the cloud. Your field staff pulls down the survey, uses it in the field, publishes up the data, and then those data 
can be accessed by you through a web portal, pulling that data in to use to analyze, visualize, um, download from the local system if you want. So then walk through this. <clears throat> the first part, configure and publish, you'll need three things. Again, that survey template, template, the uh, one to three connect software, and just the survey one to three website. Um, this is where you'll need a, an elevated level of administrative rights to actually publish uh, up that survey. And so now I'm just gonna walk you through how easy it is to configure the survey. Um, so you're gonna first open up the, after you download, you're gonna open up the survey one, two, three, connect. You'll simply uh, start a new survey. You're gonna name that survey to be meaningful to you. Um, click the radio file button and simply navigate to the, the template that we provided for you. Hit the create survey. Boom, it's gonna, it's, it's what drives us is the, uh, <clears throat> what you're seeing here is the actual Excel spreadsheet that we, we shared with you. When, once you initiate this, it, it will generate the survey, which is seen behind the spreadsheet here. Um, next, you will be directed to customize um, some things in the form. Um, the first thing is the faults. Um, there are um, there are uh, uh, several defaults that um, we will ask you to um, uh, to set. Um, for example, the first one there. How will this right away be accessed? There are several options for this. Um, you can you can set that default. Um, the state default is already set for you. That um, default um, calls to a list of um, plants for your state. Um, and then several other um, uh, options that you need to customize. Which I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll explain when we go through the actual tool. Um, the second thing is customizing plant list. Um, for example, milkweeds and noxious weeds have already been populated in the choices for you, but they might not be appropriate for your state. So there's a, a list of over 100 possible milkweeds uh, currently in the form. Um, you might want to eliminate those who just have those choices uh, of appropriate milkweeds for your state. Um, certainly, the, you can just leave it as is. Um, the, the form is um, auto populate so as you're typing a species, it will pop up. But best practice is, is to limit those choices to, that are, are appropriate to the error. And the same thing for noxious weeds. Um, we have currently a list of Federally, just federally listed noxious weeds. Um, this is all, by the way, pulled from USDA plants database. Um, but these uh, noxious weeds may not be appropriate for your state. So here you can um, just limit it goes to ones that you, your state manages as noxious weeds. And then finally, once you configure the, the defaults and the, and, the, and the plant list, you simply Click the publish button here. And it just takes a few moments and then um, you publish it up to the, to the cloud and then it'll tell you when it's done. And then you're almost, you're almost ready for uh, prime time. Um, the last thing you need to do is just log into the Survey123 website with your elevated credentials, so your, your, your um, publisher credentials. Um, you'll, you'll, it, this is what this looks like. You're, you're going to first log into your enterprise account by hitting whatever your enterprise account name is, and then your, your elevated uh, credentials. And then once you uh, do that, you're going to come to the screen here. It's, you're going to see the, your, um, your survey that you just published up. Right now, it's, it's, there's a little lock symbol. That means it's private just to you. Um, so we want to make this public to our whole organization so our field staff can then use it. So it's simply three clicks um, in, in this screen here. You're going to click uh, on, the, on the, this is public web, this is the collaborate, collaborate button. Takes you to this screen, this screen here. You're going to click, um, you're going to set both the submitter and the viewer um, settings to just members of my organization. So not everybody, um, uh, in the organization can access this form. 
And then the second thing down here is you want to click the open the survey in the survey one two three three field app directly. Um, then there is a link that you can share with your field tech that will automatically download that form, or they can log into the survey one two three field app and then go up and then pull it down from the cloud either way. So we hit save, and then we are ready to collect our data. So again, um, our field staff will need to have user IDs in our PIS online, Not, nothing elevated to basic user accounts, um, so that they can um, uh, um, use their 123 field app um, on their mobile device, again, tablet, phone, any mobile device. You do not need data service, by the way. Um, once this form is downloaded, it is local to the machine, um, and only you will only need an internet connection here that it is submitted. So that's really nice. You don't have to worry about that service. Um, just um, when they're back in the office, they can see it. So you're going to need your uh, RTS online administrator to give um, your field staff user um, user plan. Then uh, those field staff will simply go to the app store on the mobile device, type in every one to three, it'll come up first thing, they're gonna bring it down, uh, and then they um, see what the screen looks like here, and then and then you'll, they'll just click um, the three bars here, and then if they need to assign in, they're gonna sign in, and then they'll be able to um, bring down and get to it. So I'm going to do a, a live demo of the tool. Let me just open up this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. How do I shrink this down? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I have it. I, I, yeah. Sorry, guys, I can't hold on to the for technical difficulties. Yeah, but I can't, I just can't move this out of the way. Oh, never mind. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. I got too many things open here. Not okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I have what I've done here is just launched the survey one, two, three field application. Um, I've logged in. I've already pulled down the form to save some time. Um, this is what my form looks like here. Um, this is a responsive design. So no matter if you're on your phone or your tablet, um, it'll resize appropriately. Um, I, you can use your phone, I wouldn't recommend it, just because, you know, if, if that thing is hard to, hard to, harder to, um, to use, but it's certainly doable, um, but best on a tablet. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just click on our survey and then hit collect. Okay, so the first question is how will this right away be assessed? This is something that I pointed out earlier that, um, uh, can be set to default. Um, let me, so we're de I've defaulted it to unload area only, which is the most common. The unload area is what it uh, what will go into or data collected in the unload area are what will go into the habitat calculator. Um, but some states want to the ability to um, pick data on the full width, regardless of the mill. They're going to note how, how the, the width of the mill so that we go into the calculation. Um, and then some states wanted to do a comparison between unload and load um, areas separately for comparison, especially when looking at multi. So we have allowed those options as well. But you as the project manager can make that decision on what your field check should do and just set it as a default so they don't have to choose it every time. And then we'll go back to unload area. And then um, the very first thing we'll do is take a GPS point of uh, the starting point of, of their survey. Um, They'll click on this map here. Um, so uh, the only thing your device needs is location of services. Um, so this does not use data, it just uses the GPS services. Um, 
or or by or yeah. Um, and so right away it found us here at our new office. Um, if you do a bad services and you want to like make it a little more precise, right here, <laughs> you can you can move it over um, based on what you see in the background, and you can display a um, uh, satellite imagery as well. Um, you can change that face map. So once we have our correct location, we're just going to hit the check mark here, and boom, it has captured our coordinates. Then we're just going to walk through start time automatic. Switch on this uh, date is automatic. Now this is. The only thing that um, if you're doing this after the fact, um, like Allison said, said, you can collect all these data on paper and then use this form um, on a desktop version of it um, to uh, populate the data after the fact. So then they have to actually um, limit the time if you're doing it on a different day. Okay, um, I'm going to put the observer name, that's me. And then you're going to give your site an, a unique ID, a road name, a site name. I'm going to call those Highway 40 125, our code, to make it a unique site. Um, then we're going to go to road type. For, um, this is a, a, a two lane road. The vegetated width for the total, the, the total width of our roadway. Let's say it's 30 feet. And then the mode width. Um, you now we're, we're going to set up a, an ideal roadside. So we have, we're going to generate a high uh, habitat score. So I'm going to say that this is an unmoved right, right away. And this is another thing that's default to the survey mode um, per protocol that it's 150 feet. If for some reason your organization wants to do a different survey mode, this is something that you can default in the back end. So the tech will won't even have to do anything with that. And then the optional mode height of the of, of the mode. Um, next is adjacent land use. Um, and as we go through these these fields, think about <clears throat> how, how this goes into our, our, our calculation in our um, in our, our four habitat component uh, area. So we're looking at breeding, foraging, threats, and management. So, um, so as we go through these, these are components that we go into making that, that score. So the adjacent land use um, habitat may be better when it's next to good habitat. So um, making a great site here, I'm going to say that this roadway is next to prairie. And again, these are all on the top of my whole list. Right off of that. Um, these all, all these drop downs are auto populated. So as you begin to type, the, the choices will be limited. So you can find it faster. The next section is management practices. So management is management is one um, one component of our habitat, um, but it is optional. We set this up so if you don't want if, you, if the user either doesn't know or you're not you're not going to record management practices for every site. You can leave this blank, or if your field tech just doesn't know, there's a don't know option. Um, when you do not populate this, or you do not know, the this does not um, ping you, uh, or like does not create a lower score for you. If that is not populated, the denominator of the score is simply adjusted. Um, so if we don't do this, so say it will be out of uh, 75 points instead of 100 points. So um, this is up to you. But we are going to do the management. We're going to say that it's um, never been herbicided. Um, the frequency of the mowing will say yeah, every few years. Okay. Next page, and there's three pages to them. Um, the second page is the, the, the meat of, of the survey. This is um, taking our vegetation, uh, our vegetation data and non-speech, um, which is optional. Um, the first two fields are, again, something that you can default. Uh, if I open up the milk, and then the, the, the three sections are taking data in of nectar plants, milkweeds, and noxious weeds. So if I open up the milkweed, um, it's, um, if you can decide whether they're going to count each plant, or if you want this a, a rapid or rapid assessment, um, you can have the field tech estimate abundance. And you'll see if it's counting plants, we're going to go through common milkweed. And as they go through, they can just tally those they see. And then, oh, we see a butterfly milkweed. 
And the, the process will always add uh, a, a, another species for all these. Um, so then we found butterfly weed. And then again, Kali, 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 and then we can go back. Oh, there's another um, more common, and so on and so forth. Um, and again, estimating abundance, we just kind of say, we're going to walk through the whole site and say, oh, these are really great, and they were 250. And let's go back to the butterfly milkweed, which was one of them. That's speaking um, to the core uh, management. You can uh, open and close these to make it um, just more compact. Um, the next, uh, oh, also open milk again. The second default, um, some states wanted to collect um, eggs and caterpillars. It's defaulted to no. Um, uh, but if you do want to collect that, you hit yes. And then these fields will also pop up. So again, as they're, as they're going through, um, they can put the number of, uh, of plants they searched. Um, for um, for eggs and larva, and then numbers for each caterpillar and uh, egg. Okay. Okay. And then what is this? The other next section is the nectar plants. Um, actually, nectar plants and not just these. Both of these, the first thing they'll do is um, put in the percent, just estimate the percent cover of these nectar plants blooming or not. So we're, we want a um, total forb health cover. So we'll say this is pretty good. It's 26 to 50 percent cover. Um, if you put anything that's non-zero in here, um, the this nectar plants field will come up. And then you can start adding your plants as you, as you identify them. Um, if for those plants you, uh, that the staff cannot identify, there is a tally for unknown blooming and unknown um, non blooming plants at the time. Um, so, but we have identified some plants here. So, the first one, and the, you can um, start typing in the plant by common name, scientific name, or code. So, I'm just, we found a black eyed Susan, so I'm just going to put Susan, we'll limit our choices. Here it is. Rebecca Herka, is, is this plant blooming? Yes. Next plant. Um, we will, for the next plant, we'll, um, it's a golden rye. There's a lot of those. So uh, I'm going to have to start picking some Dago. And then, and you'll notice um, that we also, in this plant, we also put stimulants. Because um, the scientific names keep changing, different people know different plants, but it's the same. Um, they can choose, um, they can choose whatever they know it as, um, but the official uh, plant code will be put in the database. So you get two people putting the same plant with the same plant code, or two, two different plants with the same plant code will go into the database. So you look like you're doubling the species. So. Okay, so Saldego, the early golden eye, that's the one. Um, is blooming? Yes. Next plant. Um, we actually have another golden rug, but we don't know what it is. They're really tough. Um, all of uh, 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 the plants you can lump to genera. So if I know it's a golden eye, but I have no idea without a microscope which, which species it is, um, you can um, do unknown. You can either put the, the genera and the species, so unknown golden rod, um, or just put, put unknowns and then all the genera will pop up and you can pick one. And so this is not the only but you can't identify. Okay, next. Uh, we can again search by code. So we have a lot of wild indigo, and there the code is the AAL. So instead of just starting to type indigo and just hit code, there it is. And this one is blooming. Okay, so we call that good. And then, oh, for the unknown, there's, um, there is the, um, an area that you could tell about an unknown, so you can maybe use that to identify later and then come back. Uh, even if the form is submitted, you can come back, correct it, add stuff, and then resubmit it, and it, it'll overwrite it in the um, in the that. This is great for quality control. If you notice that the you can actually field staff to to, to, um, to change, fix something, or confirm something, and then resubmit it. Okay, let's first um, this. And then finally, again, not just weeds, 
um, we'll say it's something low. Um, you can, you can not see, and again, um, this is something you're going to limit to just those uh, uh, the species that concern are, are, that you actually manage on your road ways um, in, in the custom agreement. Okay, so I think we're good here. We've collected all our data. Um, we're going to go to the final page. This gives you the opportunity to know any um, adult uh, monarch butterflies. Um, and so uh, this is still going to go into the calculator, but it just um, uh, shows us um, presence. That's you said, but a monarch butterfly um, So it's a nice like field to have. Um, some notes about other pollinator observations, some site notes. You can take uh, photos of the site. Uh, and then finally, lastly, there is a food intent to the survey. And the start time and time is to just to, um, to capture effort in the field. The way uh, you have it's immediate gratification. You have um, you have all your uh, bird school as well as your overall habitat score immediately before you submit it. Um, this is not only meet the sea right away, but also if there's something weird, like something blank, and you might want to go back and look at what about that section, and just a little bit of um, uh, quality control. But we did a great job. Our over uh, our habitat score is uh, almost 86 percent. That's really high. Um, so we're going to be happy with that. We're going to submit it. Um, here, this so we're going to feel. I, I can't submit right now because I'm not going to submit, so I can send it later. And it will simply go to an outbox. Then when I'm in the field or in the office again, I'll click on the outbox. There it is, highway 40 125. Um, I can open it up, and um, this is where I can uh, review, um, make any corrections. Yeah, I've identified that I'm in this, uh, a plant. Um, you know, if you do that, just know that it could um, reduce the unknown number by one that you add it. And it looks good, so I'm going to officially submit it now. And then it will be in the stack box. And again, the stack box, same thing. You can open it again, edit, and then resend it, and it will override the first one that it created another time. So that is the tool. I'm going to close this down. And then um, the last, uh, we'll look at the last step, which is to view and analyze uh, the data and visualize it. So the only thing I can need for this is the survey one to see website. So we're going to log into our website with our credentials again. And um, we'll We'll pull up our data, and I'm going to do this live in a second, um, but just walk you through this. Um, you'll be able to um, explore the data in the database, and this is where you can say, oh, this is something that's here. Hey, Jennifer, take, you, know, make, you, know, can you confirm that this is correct? If not, you can do some of the, the, the survey. Um, you can export this as a, um, well, I, I recommend a file view database because it's Several related tables. Um, if you download it as a file view database, all those related relational connections um, will be intact. Um, so, this is if you want to um, do some analysis um, locally on a desktop uh, uh, RPS uh, application. And then finally, if you want to just use this in the online environment, I can open it in that viewer and I can configure it to display how I want. And I'm going to show you this live uh, right now. Okay, so who's up in this game? Okay. Okay, so I am going to. Okay. So, um, Okay, so I've logged into our uh, our PS one two three website, and I see that um, here is our um, here is our survey right here. 
I can open this. And instead of that collaborate button, which is, I told you before, we hit the data button. And you can see that um, the survey that we just made. So I can uh, explore this here. Um, and go through and see every, every question. Again, um, let me this down. So you can, you can, there's tools here to filter, um, to find certain surveys, and all your kind of standard exploration, data exploration tools. This is the export, you can export the, the file to your database, but I want to open it up in the next year. And since it's really boring to display this type of survey, I'm going to speak to you and show you the data that we collected last year and how we would like that. Okay, so um, we piloted this um, this survey last year to kind of tweak it, um, work, out, work out the weighting and rating for our habitat scores. Um, so we, uh, we do this in Minnesota, but also other places as well. And a big shout out to Delaware, who did like almost 300 surveys um, and helped us a lot um, in that state as well. Okay, so this is, this is what our data looks like. Um, when I first just open it up in the back end, um, but we want to uh, visualize it um, in, a, in a meaningful way. So um, I can open it up in the map viewer and it'll look like this right away. It's kind of kind of ugly, like um, it'll look like this. It's not classified or anything. Um, it'll be, sometimes it could be weird codes and you, 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 you can leave it in all these. So here's all the tools you can use. Um, you can change the pop-up, you can change how it looks, the thing, um, the visibility. Um, I'm not going to do all that live um, to save so time. I'll just show you what we did. So um, first thing you can do is classify the data. So you can use the um, simulation tools to, um, to do all kinds of different types of simulation. Um, we chose to the three classified uh, classified into three different breaks using manual breaks. Um, you can certainly you can change that how you want. Um, and then the other thing we did, and, and so and so here is the, the classification. One thing I'll point out you'll notice is the highest score um, for our original data set is 75. That's not good. Um, but that is because we didn't take we didn't have the management information. So that didn't go into the score. Um, so we've adjusted that. So if you don't, like I said, if you don't have that amount of information, another, um, uh, like the uh, Noxus Leaf, for example, that is also optional, then that section is knocked out of the denominator. You're always uh, out of 100%. Um, so that has been fixed. Um, so let's click on uh, one of these sites. The other thing I have um, I, I customized is the pop ups. So to so just go, the um the component and the overall have text score. This is something you can just change in the um the pop up. I can add let's see I add survey date, I'll add the um uh, roadside width, you know, width or whatever you want to display for your purpose. And again, when you do this, um you can share this um, and it's accessible to anybody in the organization. You can set the data to be visible to anybody in the organization. You can also set this, um, you can also set this um, to be public um, if you want it, an outward facing um, visualization of, of your survey. Um, you can get really fancy with this. You can, from here, you can, well, sharing, you can. Um, you can see how you want to share it. Um, you, you can share a link, you can embed a website, you can create a web application from it. So all kinds of level two functionality that you can do with this. I won't go into now, but it is possible. So if you are GIS enabled or still using your GIS staff, you can see more on that. Um, but that is the basics of everything. Um, uh, I think, Allison, is there anything else you, you guys would point out here? Okay, so then lastly, I want to pull up my, pull up my 
the screen again. I, um, so we're going to take a few questions. I see there's some people have chatted some stuff. Um, but uh, I'm going to leave the screen up while we answer questions um, and uh, invite you to try out the survey tool uh, yourself. So I have sent this survey um, to public um, so that you can go, go in, uh, down, you can download the survey once you feel that. You can then, after that, you have to do that first. And then secondly, you can click on this Get Survey link and it'll bring the form directly into that survey app. Play around with it, submit some data, and if you want to look at your results, this is a public um, uh, link to then look at the data. So please try it out. If you notice any weird bugs, anything, let me know, of course. Because um, very soon we're going to be uh, uh, sending this out um, publicly. Um, each state, remember, will have its um, own customized plant that's already embedded. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's it. If you have any questions in terms of the technical side of things, you can email, email me at this address. So, yeah. yeah, so thank you so much, Karen. That was fantastic. And just to clarify, this the links that you see on your screen right now are basically like a demo set, so you can go and try it out. You can't break it, so yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is like uh, will be really quick and easy. And then what we're going to email out to you real soon is um, the user guide, and inside that we'll have the instructions for how you would build this in your own state as system. And so just want to make that distinction. Yeah. And you know, as you go down that road, um, feel free to reach out to us. Just to remind you, when you build this in your own state GIS, we will not see your data. It will be your own data set. And so we would love to hear back from you as for how it's going, if you've collected data, and if you do want to share your data sets, that's fantastic. We will all have compatible data um, and it'll be fun to look at. So you you should stay in touch with us. Yeah, the first question we did get is asking about the step-by-step -step instruction, but I'll just show it real quick. It really is step-by-step, -step, screenshots. Um, it really walks you through everything. And then I'm available for questions if you come up with. Um, yeah, and walking. we can update it too if people find that there's parts that can be clarified. Um, we're all about adaptive management here, so um, let us know. Uh, other questions? Oh. We have a question uh, about, let me open up. Um, so we have a question, somebody wanted to know if, uh, so for the road type, let me pull this. For road type, they wanted to add um, the clover leaves. So if you're, you're collecting data within a clover leaf, that is not an option for uh, current in the survey. So I'm gonna open this up, but I can, I'm gonna show you a little more of the back. This gets into these things that you could customize if you like. Yeah. Um, and if you've got someone who's comfortable making these changes, you could really add on additional fields. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily calculate, but you could then have the data. Um, and so here, Karen's example of, of one thing you could change with your growth type. Yeah. So you have to be a little careful because some of these things go into a calculation and some of them don't. Um, so, so, like the road type does go into the calculation. You could certainly add, um, uh, you could certainly add something. You have to have a listing and say, um, uh, we're going to say clover leaves. Um, but the code that you associate with um, will go into the calculation. So, if you decide that a clover leaf is the same um, kind of the same. same as a say two lane slower, lane, traffic. slower traffic that kind of thing. Um, you would simply give it three and everything would be fine. So whether it's a two lane or clover leaf, it's going to give it a total three. That three is going to go into calculation. If you say give it a four, it will not. It will not know what to do with that. So that's the only caveat. Um, you can certainly add fault new. Uh, Add a whole new question. So each row is a question. You can add as many of them as you want. And if they don't want to do a calculation, but if it's something you want to collect, you can, uh, and you kind of know what you're doing with Survey 23, um, you can certainly make this your own. Um, do anything you want. Just be careful of those, um, those 
those fields to go into a calculation. I'm going to show you those calculations. Anything like white is a, 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 just a question you see in the form. But all these things down here are the hidden fields. If you hidden, 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 these are all the calculations. So all those answers get, get converted into different things. Some of the a few steps um, go into this um, subcomponent and then component um, put a scores and then it will have type scores. The nice thing about this is it doubles as embedded data for how we're doing these calculations. So it's not a black box. Um, you find the calculation here and here. Many, many, many rows here, the many columns. And I think it's interesting. That's it. Okay, there we go. So the, this calculation field uh, will show you exactly how we got all these. If you, if, you, if, you, if you place it back, you can see exactly um, the method that we use here. I think that answers that question. Right. Any yeah. other questions? We don't seem to have a lot more else in the chat box. Okay. But great. you can reach us anytime, call us, send us an email. We'll be sending out um, more information very soon. Use a guide and we'll set this up. And um, we appreciate your interest in uh, the Road Tag for Monarch. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot.